Beyond the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, Esther Roll is one of the rare individuals who has differentiated herself in the entertainment sector. You give it all away in one day, Walter Lee. Yet, behind the scenes of her illustrious career lies a story of resentment that was hidden from the media. Well, you can say her resentment somehow shaped her relationships and experiences within the entertainment industry. Join us as we explore Esther Roll's personal life, career achievements, and of course, the relationship that left a mark on her. Esther's personal life and career. Born on November 8, 1920, to a family of 18 children, Esther Roll's life started in Pompano Beach, Florida, though her parents were Bahamian immigrants. Her father, Jonathan Roll, had a good life as a farmer, and her mother was Elizabeth Iris Roll, popularly known as Knee Dames. Both parents were born and raised in Nassau, New Providence in the Bahamas, and moved to Florida sometime after their marriage. Rolla graduated from Blanche Ely High School in Pompano Beach, Florida. She then attended Hunter College in Atlanta, before transferring to the new school Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut. For many years, Esther Roll worked in a traditional day job in New York City's Garment District. Growing up in a large family, she witnessed firsthand the challenges faced by black individuals in pursuit of their dreams. Her first roles were on stage, and her first performance in New York City made an appearance in the drama The Blacks, which was performed in 1962. At that time, it was common practice for Robert Hooks and the Negro Ensemble Company to cast her in plays that they had produced. The Crucible and Blues for Mr. Charlie had two more shows in which she also made an appearance. The most notable early part that Esther Roll played was that of Miss Maybell in the Melvin Van Peebles musical Don't Play Us Cheap, which was performed on Broadway in 1972 and later adapted into a film of the same name. During the year 1977, Esther Roll played the role of Lady Macbeth in the Haitian-influenced adaptation of William Shakespeare's Macbeth. This was directed by Orson Welles and performed at the Henry Street New Federal Theater in Manhattan. The landscape of opportunity in her era was marred with discrimination, and for a black actresses like Esther Roll, the roles were often limited and unvaried. However, her early works in theater laid the groundwork for a career that would soon gain momentum, carrying her into the living rooms of viewers across the country. Rise to prominence. Both on the stage and in the cinema, Esther Roll was a formidable force of nature who possessed amazing talent. Everyone saw her as a woman of extraordinary skill. She had a profound interest in the arts throughout her formative years. As a lover of art and drama, Esther Roll embarked on a journey that would eventually bring her to the stages of Broadway, where she would captivate audiences with her presence. Her audience felt that her yearning was so powerful that it shone with a brilliance more than the sun that was blazing in Florida. Nevertheless, it was her portrayal as Florida Evans in the groundbreaking comedy Good Times that was responsible for her name becoming embedded in the collective awareness of the people of the United States. She played a character that resonated with viewers, and as a consequence, she became an icon of the matriarch of the Evans family. In both her professional and personal life, the time when Esther Roll decided to leave her job on Good Times was a defining moment that took most by surprise. This occurrence, however, catapulted her into a new period of her life, which was full of opportunities as well as challenges throughout its entirety. As a result, she ensured that her voice would continue to be heard. Her ability to portray a wide range of characters, from dramatic to comedic, garnered her praise and admiration from her contemporaries. Her flexibility as an actor also allowed her to take on a wide range of roles. Esther Roll's audiences followed that what truly differentiated her from other people was the unwavering dedication that she showed to her work. This is quite obvious from her skill sets. Although it is believed that her skills were not the only thing that marked her as distinct, but that she embraced each part of her career with rigorous preparation, completely submerging herself in the personas that she played. Good Times Era Due to Esther Roll's unwavering commitment to her profession and values, she garnered the respect of her peers in the field. Additionally, 
she won the hearts of her followers, who saw in her a reflection of their own life. Despite this, something was happening behind the scenes. It was only through good times that Esther Roll would be able to put her determination to the test in a manner that had never been accomplished before. As a result of disagreements with the show's creators and worries about the direction that her character might go in the future, she made the important decision to leave the series after the fourth season had aired. She made her decision because she was adamant about upholding the integrity of her persona and the representation of African-American families on television. Rumors began swirling around in the media that Esther Rolla had the intention to leave because she wasn't fond of Walker. In an interview with the Greenville News in 1978, she, however, set matters straight when she said that she has no gripes against Jimmy Walker. She also clarified that the person with whom she hates is JJ because he's an idiot. She further noted that anyone who has never watched an episode of Good Times might consider idiot a harsh word she used to describe JJ's character. She also penned down a note that writers did get a little out of hand with JJ's phrases, attire, and dance moves. According to Esther Roll's claims, at one point, the series went from being centered around the Evans family to the outrageous adventures of JJ. She went further to clear those doubts on the minds of her fans by saying that Jimmy Walker is an ambitious young man with whom she has respect for, but wouldn't go out with him because they're not the same people. Prior to this interview, Esther Roll spoke with writer Gary Deeb about her departure from the series, and when the article was released, the tone was very harsh. According to the actress, the nationally syndicated columnist quoted her but slammed Jimmy Walker simultaneously, which she disagreed with. Esther Roll believed that many people who read that article didn't separate what she said from what Deeb said. She also claimed that she thought Deeb was a little harsh on Jimmy, but she knows Jimmy so well to never go harsh on another person. After those incidents, Esther Roll continued to demonstrate her strong stage presence by accepting roles that highlighted her flexibility as an actor. She also continued to captivate audiences with her performances, the unseen issues Esther had with good times. Esther Roll was very choosy when it comes to the film productions she had to participate in. She chose parts that were congruent with her values and made a constructive contribution to the portrayal of African-American life. One of the most noteworthy aspects of Esther Roll's work was her dedication to promoting black talent inside the business throughout her entire career. As a result of her active mentoring and support of up-and-coming actors, filmmakers, and writers, she paved the way for a new generation of African-American artists to establish themselves in the Hollywood industry. Her conviction in the transformative power of mentoring and community building had a significant impact on the lives she touched. In the two-part season finale titled Love Has a Spot on His Lung, Florida makes the announcement that she is engaged to Carl Dixon, popularly known as Moses Gunn, a man with whom she had started a love relationship around the time when the fourth season came to an end. It was revealed in the first episode of the fifth season, which is titled The Evans Get Involved Part 1, that Florida and Carl got married behind the scenes and then moved to Arizona in order to take care of Carl's health. This information is given in the context of the marriage. On account of the departure of Amos and Esther Roll, Du Bois was given the responsibility of playing the role of the lead actor. While this was going on, Wilona became concerned about the well-being of the Evans children, who were now living on their own. As a small child, Penny Gordon had experienced abuse. Her mother had also abandoned her, causing Wilona to finally adopt her. Going forward in the show, Janet Jackson joined the cast during the fifth season and portrayed the character of Penny Gordon. Over the course of that season, Johnny Brown played the role of Nathan Bookman, the family's administrator, and his portrayal of the character gained significance. At the beginning of the fifth season, Johnny Brown was promoted to the position of series regular, and his name was included in the opening credits of the show shortly thereafter. The ratings went down, as was observed, and this was because of a lot of anger issues ongoing in the show. It was also clear to both the producers and the viewers that the absence of Esther Roll had caused the series to be devoid of a core center of attention, which was something that was sorely required in order to bring everyone together. 
CBS and the producers of the show came to the realization that, in order to increase viewership, they needed to take some drastic action. This realization occurred before the beginning of the recording of the sixth season of the show. According to Steve Mills, who was serving as the vice president of CBS programming at the time, viewers had lost the essence of the show. He asserted that the show was a failure because parents did not provide any direction or instruction. Esther Roll was later approached by the producers, who offered her the chance to make a guest appearance on the series. However, after the producers agreed to a number of her demands, which included a higher income and scripts of a higher quality, she eventually consented to do so. In addition, Esther Roll was of the opinion that the producers ought to make the character of J.J. more accountable, as she believed that the character did not serve as a good model for young African Americans. In addition to this, Esther Roll insisted that the producers should exclude the character of Carl Dixon from the storyline. The storyline that centered on the Carl Dixon persona was reportedly not something that Esther Roll enjoyed. According to the reports, if it weren't for the plot, Esther Roll strongly believed that Florida would not have moved on so quickly after James's murder or abandoned her children. In addition, Esther Roll was of the opinion that the authors had failed to take into account Florida's ardent Christian beliefs by having her fall in love with Carl, who was an atheist, and subsequently marry him. Esther Roll's Impact on Good Times The first episode of Esther Roll's sixth season, Florida's Homecoming Part 1, depicts Florida traveling back from Arizona without Carl in order to attend Thelma's wedding to Keith Anderson, a professional football player. The wedding was scheduled to take place with Keith Anderson. However, the character of Keith Anderson was played by Ben Powers, who signed on with the band for the last season. In an exceedingly rare, uncut version of Florida's Homecoming Part 2, Wilona briefly pulls Florida aside and talks Carl after Florida had returned home from Arizona. According to viewers, this version was incredibly rare. In the show, Florida responded to Carl's misfortune with a wistful grin and a shake of her head, implying that Carl had passed away as a result of cancer. After some time has passed, Florida made one last mention of Carl whilst explaining a book that she and Michael had gone out of their way to buy for him. The show, according to fans, lacked emotions and reality. The rage from the fans caused the series to be finally canceled by CBS during the 1979-1978 season, despite the fact that it got revised earlier at Esther Roll's request when she returned to the show. Few other actors were later added to the cast as a means to propel the show towards appealing the audience. However, the ratings continued to fall. In the final episode of the series, which is titled The End of the Rainbow, all the characters were finally able to achieve their happy ending, which inclined a bit towards the demands of viewers. In the final show, it came as a great surprise and delight to Thelma that his newly created character, Dino Woman, moved into an apartment with a number of other female pals. As a result of this newly conceived character, JJ was given the opportunity to become a nationally syndicated artist for a comic book company using his work. Upon making the decision to enroll in college, Michael relocated to a resident hall located on the campus. Keith, on the other hand, was able to repair his wounded knee with the assistance of his own physical therapy and training, which finally led to the Chicago Bears granting him a contract to play football for the upcoming season. No penny. In training with the Chicago Bears. <laughs> Keith finally broke the news to Thelma that he and Thelma would soon be moving into a luxury apartment that is situated in the famed Gold Coast region of the city. Thelma also revealed that she was expecting their first child together as a couple, which was yet another announcement that she had made during the show. The offer that Keith made to Florida to move in with them so that she may help Thelma with the new baby was accepted by Florida. After being elevated to the post of head buyer at the boutique, Wilona immediately made the announcement that she and Penny will also be quitting the projects. This occurred as soon as she took over the role. After that, Wilona reveals that her new apartment is situated in the same apartment building as Florida, Keith, and Thelma, and that she and Penny will consequently become the Evans's neighbors on the ground floor. Wilona also revealed that she and Penny would be friends with Florida. According to rumors, 
The show ended abruptly because John, popularly known as James, left the show at the end of season three. Additionally, Esther Roll couldn't continue the show on her own, which made no one accept the responsibility of the continuity of the show. After Esther Roll noticed that the viewers weren't still much pleased with the abrupt ending, she got Moses Gunn to continue running the show whilst playing Carl, who became Florida's love interest. Carl's job was to take James's role, and that was an epic fail. Not too long, Esther felt the show wasn't making any sense and gave up leaving the show to the hands of Jimmy, JJ, a father figure to his siblings Thelma and Michael, thereby infuriating the audience who didn't like a mature grown-up JJ. So, Wilona was given more opportunity and allowed Johnny Brown, popularly known as Bookman, to also get featured in the show. Shortly after, Janet Jackson, popularly known as Penny, was also recruited to the show to play the role of Wilona's adopted daughter. Everyone wanted Wilona to replace Esther Roll in a motherly way, but viewers believed that no one had the aura Esther Roll exuded. This made Esther Roll's impact on the show more feasible to her fans of the great impact she had throughout her stay. Rumors swirled that despite the commitment the writers of Good Times made to keep the show alive, the show failed because Esther Roll had left, making the show lose its impact to the audience. Esther R. Personal Challenges and Triumphs Esther R.'s life was not devoid of its fair share of issues and personal challenges throughout its entirety. Both on and off screen, these factors contributed to the level of depth and complexity that her character possessed. Using her position to speak her ideas and campaign for change, particularly in the areas of African American rights, civil rights, and social justice concerns, she was notoriously vocal and did not shy away from expressing her opinions. In addition to her time spent on stage and screen, Esther left an indelible mark on the history of African American theater and film. The business underwent a transformation as a result of her commitment to conserving and honoring African American culture, her advocacy for authenticity, and her mentoring of up-and-coming talent. In addition to challenging the established order, she was a pioneer who introduced new opportunities to others. Esther Roll's achievements, which continued to break the spotlight even in the modern day, inspired actors and artists to explore roles that reflect their ancestry and convey tales that matter. These aspects of her character, both on and off screen, added to her character's depth and complexity. Esther R.'s Family Life Beyond the remarkable career Esther Roll had in theater and film, her personal life, particularly the ties she had with her husband and children, was an important component of who she was as a person. Esther Roll was married to Oscar Robinson in 1955, a musician and composer who possessed a great deal of talent. Even though Robinson was not as well known to the general public as Esther Roll was, he nevertheless managed to have a great career in the music industry until their tragic divorce in 1975. Esther Roll had no children, but did have one ex-stepdaughter, Shirley Mae Robinson, who was born in 1936 from Oscar's previous marriage. Esther Roll tried to maintain a healthy relationship with Shirley Mae Robinson, even with the rumors that spread about her indifference towards her. Some people felt Shirley Mae Robinson was hidden from the media because of the rift Esther Roll had with her husband. According to the rumors, Esther Roll's ex-husband, Oscar, had been in contact with his previous family, which culminated into a conflict that ended their marriage. Esther Roll also had a sister, Estelle Bernice Roll, who was born on October 1, 1906 in Hartswell, British West Indies. She was an actress, known for To Kill a Mockingbird in 1962, The Learning Tree in 1969, and The Clairvoyant in 1982. She was married to Walter Alexander Evans and died on July 20, 1985 in New York City, New York, USA. Esther Roll also had another sister, Rosanna Carter, who was a member of the Negro Ensemble Company Theatrical Group in the 1970s. Rosanna Carter's Broadway credits include Innocent Black in 1980, the American Clock in the same year, 1980, and My Sister in 1973. Rosanna Carter also starred in many movies, including Night of the Juggler in 1980 and The Brother from Another Planet in 1984. Following bigger roles, Rosanna Carter Guest starred on many television shows. In 1974, 
Rosanna Carter made a guest appearance on her sister, Esther Roll's sitcom Good Times as Cora. In 1985, she guest starred as Mrs. McNeil on television's Tales from the Dark Side. In 1992, Rosanna Carter guest starred as Rosanna on television's The Cosby Show. Also, she guest starred on the television show I'll Fly Away in 1993. Rosanna Carter's last guest star appearance was on television's Law and Order in 1997 as Mrs. Hemmerich in the season 8 premiere. According to her producer, she had appeared on Law and Order twice before, first in 1990 as Mrs. Jackson, and a small extra role in 1994 as an old woman. In 1974, Rosanna Carter was injured when a police car struck her automobile from behind, forcing it to hit a parked bus. Seven years later, a Bronx Supreme Court jury awarded her $1 million for her injuries, impairment of earning capacity, and lost wages. Rosanna Carter received an Odelco Award in 1977 for her work as a supporting actress in the play Unfinished Women. Due to that, she was nominated for an Emmy Award as Outstanding Guest Actress in her previous drama series in I'll Fly Away in 1993, losing to Elaine Stritch, who performed with her in Law & Order. Speculations from the media felt that it was much easier for Esther Roll to find her career path and perform outstandingly as an actress because she had carefully observed the acting path of her elder sister, Rosanna Carter. Esther R.'s Detailed Achievements and Death from the late 1950s until she was offered a scholarship to study acting at the New School for Social Research, Esther Roll worked in a pocketbook factory and attended drama lessons at George Washington Carver School in Harlem. However, she was unable to attend the New School for Social Research. Shogala Aloba was a dancing troupe that was led by dance teacher Asadeta Defora. During her time there, she also became a member of the ensemble, and by 1960, she was the director of the group. Esther Roll was discovered to have played her first role on stage in Jean Genet's production of The Blacks in the year 1962, Blues for Mr. Charlie in 1964, The Amen Corner in 1965, and Day of Absence in the same year, 1965. The stage plays were rumored to be three of the plays that Esther Roll had appeared in while performing on the New York stage in her early years. The film's Nothing But a Man in 1964 and Don't Play Us Cheap in 1972 were among her early projects in the film industry. During the time that she was working on the latter production, as well as her recurring part as Sadie Gray in the daytime television drama One Life to Live, producer Norman Lear approached her with the request to audition for the character of Maud. One of the most peculiar roles that Esther Roll ever played was that of Stagecoach Mary in the South by Northwest documentary series that aired on public television in 1974. Following her previous role in Good Times, Esther Roll went on to portray Bernice in Member of the Wedding in 1989 and Lena in A Raisin in the Sun in the same year, 1989, both of which were performed on stage and on television. According to the New York Times, with Esther Roll's economy of gesture and her telling moments of silence, the actress embodies a universe of knowing, pain, and prayer about her performance in the 1981 film and the River Niger, in which she played the role of the tipsy old guard grandmother. In 1979, Esther Roll was honored with an Emmy Award for her work on the television show Summer of My German Soldier. Additionally, several NAACP Image Awards were bestowed to her at that time. I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, a memoir written by Maya Angelou and published in 1979, featured Esther Rolla as a significant character. She also played the role of Aunt Sarah in Rosewood in 1977 and Idella in Driving Miss Daisy in 1989. Train Ride was Esther Roll's last film, and it was released in the year 2000, two years after she had passed away. Along with her many appearances in the theater, Esther Roll appeared in a total of 39 films and television shows. Esther Roll, who was committed to combating social and political inequality, gave a reading of the proposed Equal Rights Amendment, which consisted of 52 words, at the annual convention of the National Organization for Women, now, in 1981. The reading received a lot of praise. Seven years later, she took part in Now's summer push for a stronger black family, 
where she addressed an audience of 90,000 people who had assembled on the mall in Washington, District of Columbia. At that time, Esther Roll was a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority, which is an organization of African-American women who have completed their undergraduate education. When Esther Roll passed away on November 17, in Culver City, in a hospital in Los Angeles, California, in 1998, just nine days after her 78th birthday, her body underwent an autopsy and was discovered that she had been suffering from problems related to diabetes. Esther Roll desired that her funeral be held at Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church, so she was buried in Westview Community Cemetery in Pompano Beach, Florida. The cemetery is a historically black burial ground built in 1952, a time when the laws and customs of Florida did not allow white people and black people to be buried in the same cemetery. Just before her death, Esther Roll was reunited with B. Arthur on RuPaul's VH1 talk show, where Esther Roll was brought out to surprise Arthur. This was the first time they had seen each other in over 25 years. When Esther Roll died, she left an estate valued in excess of $1.7 million, including $200,000 in cash, a $400,000 at home, and a $1.72 million in treasuries. In addition, she owned 1,000 shares of Beth Dames Corporation, several mutual funds, and a 2% interest in El Toro, Limited. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.